Welcome again, everybody. We are really excited to do this. Gail and I came up with this after seeing a lot of people just in the same boat, that they were afraid to do the embroidery, that they didn't know how to get started, that they had never done it before, and they were just uncertain, that they didn't know, you know, the first step, the next step, and they things were just confusing to them. And so we thought, let's do an embroidery 101 just something to take you from beginning to the time that you are stitching out and just what are the steps that we need to do to get there. And so we came up with, Gail, are you gonna share the um, lesson pack? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, hang on a sec. I've got to find my screen shared down here somewhere. Here it is. Where's it gone? Okay. Okay, so while she's doing that, so basically we just want you to be able to face your fear and and be able to do all the things that this machine can do because it can do so many things that are really a lot of fun. And one of the ways to get there is by developing a consistent routine. And one of the first things that we're going to do is Gail's going to run you through her routine. And I pretty much have the exact same routine. I do the exact same thing every time I'm switching from sewing to embroidery and then back again. I have a, I have a case that just has everything in it. And I have, you know, I just have everything that I need in it. I have my feet, I have needles, I have the tool, I have everything I need all right there. And then I just have my routine to do that. Uh, the next thing is that there, um, so Gail's going to take you through talking about threading your machine and about needles. And um, and then we're going to move on to, I believe it was hooping. Yeah. Yep. I'm just looking at it real quick. And then we're going to move on to hooping. And I'm going to take you through that. And we're going to get you all set up. So from beginning to end, from threading it and getting in your needle and choosing the right needle and then um, choosing your stabilizer and getting it in your hoop with your fabric. Um, we're gonna walk you through all of that. And then you're going to stitch out one of the designs that's actually in your machine. And it's design number six, and we will help you do that when the time comes. So you just need to have four thread colors. And then um, we're gonna do that later on. And then after we're all done with that, I'm going to share my screen with you and show you how I download designs that I have purchased and how I get them saved on my computer and then moved over to my thumb drive. So that is pretty much what we're going to do today. And I can actually show you. I did stitch out what Buffy made for us. I don't know if you can see that. Can you guys see that? It's super cute. Isn't she amazing? I just love it. Yeah, it's just super, super cute. And she just did a great job. And you guys are for being here today and sticking with us are going to get that design so that you can stitch it out too. All right. So are there any questions before we get started. You can just raise your hand and pop them in the chat. Like Gail said, since there are two of us here, one of us is always keeping an eye on the chat. And so we can answer any questions that you might have while the other one is talking. So if you have anything at all, just pop it into the chat. All right, Gail. All right. And of course, it's... um. It's me. All righty. So let me just put that on. And then can everyone see my machine? Yes, I can see it. There's my fingers. Hello, fingers. Um, so as you know, um, we're not professionals. 
That'll come out clearly. We just love these machines. So anyway, um, what I want to show you is how I was shown to thread after all the issues I had with this twisting bobbin case. You might see that some questions where people go that their needle jams and what happens and then their bobbin case burrs and all that. I hadn't had, well, I'll say I didn't have it happen. I actually did have it happen seven times. I just thought it was what it was me. Um, anyway, when I really, 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 really jammed it to the point where I had to get um, wire cutters to cut the needle out of my pattern um, and it was really wrecked and then all the time was off, so I took it in. And then I was really annoyed and I emailed Genomi Australia and their head technician, Lachlan is his name if you ever want to know, um, just fabulous. And he was fantastic and stepped me through and worked with my dealer to um, resolve it. Some of it was me and that was the way I was threading it. Um, which was really good to know because I thought I was pretty good at threading. but So I've changed that. Um, but it, for Lachlan, the head tech in Australia, it's the bobbin case. He does not agree with using the yellow bobbin case for embroidery. He's spoken to Genomi US about that. But they've chosen not to listen to him. Since I've swapped to only use the red bobbin case for embroidery and a couple of other things, I've had no further issues. Um, Francis and Holly and a few others have tried this um, way and it has definitely helped. So this has been recommended. Now, not everybody does it and it's your choice. You can certainly use the yellow bobbin case. Um, it has a higher tension. Um, but I guess the thing with it is that after having spent, um, someone's just going to join, I'm just going to admit them, um, after spending, what are they, 35 well, in Australia, $35, $40 a case, I spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on them. Um, it's been okay. And, Chris, I've used the yellow bobbin case for like 18 months and it'll be fine, and then one day it will... It will just go bad. Um, Sky, is there a reason why you're presenting? Um, so I think based on my experience and the experience of what Genomi Australia told me, I'd recommend you use the red one. Again, your choice. But you've got a chance. Oh, I see what you've done. Thank you. Um, I think you've just got a higher chance of that case twisting. And what happened? I still haven't got it. I don't know if you can see it. Um, I, kept, I kept the piece, which is the stopper, the one that broke, and it bends. And that's okay, Sky, that was good. Um, and it bends in, and then they had to fix that. Then they had to recalibrate the bobbin case. So I've kept it. To, as just a reference to go if it happens again. So I don't want to, again, I'm not trying to make you scared, but I think I might have, so I'm sorry if I did. But I think just a lesson learned from what happened. Um, so anyway, so the way my routine is that I go from top to bottom, particularly on swapping from sewing to embroidery, I find that if I don't, I forget something. Um, I actually, I have a thread stand as well. Um, I'm not going to show you what, show you that and my camera is just about to fall. Oh. Um, we'll do it the other way. Like we'll use the horizontal one. How many's got a thread stand? Many of you? So, yeah, I mean, do I prefer it? Yeah, I probably do. Um, so, and then the difference being that Sky's just making it bigger as a screen share, which is fabulous. I've just worked out what you were doing. Thank you. Um, with the thread stand, it will hook on here. 
um, and then you'll go through the normal path. If you're using a spool of thread, and I, I posted in the group you know, Friday a day, um, if it has a bigger hole in it, which means that when you use this, it flaps around. I use the inside of a Guterman 250 metre spool and I actually put that on the inside of it and that, that gives me is the smaller hole so now when I put it in it doesn't rock around. So I found that hack on Pinterest, I think, one day. And it was a bit of a game changer for me. I have been known to go and buy just the spool of thread so I can take the inside out of it. Um, so it's um, it, that just helps when I use that. So I would then use the little spool holder to then hold it. Um, You've all threaded before because that's what you do um, for sewing. So I'm not um, I'm not too concerned. But then what I do now, so just so you understand with the camera setup, I just have to sort of um, straddle a few things to make sure you guys can see it. So it may not go as easily as it normally does. So to to thread it, you would just go in and around and as you normally do and you'll see though that I'm holding the thread and I like to hold it but then once I get it up to the top this is my forcing and what I'm just trying to feel is that um, it clicks into the tension disc and it's really important that it does that. Apparently if it doesn't go into the top hook, this hook here, it can come out and it can twist your bobbin case and cause issues. But anyway, so just thread it as you would and then what I'll do is I'll just hopefully put this down low enough. Can you now yeah. see? Right, so yeah. you can see down here. For those of you that have the special edition, which is what I've got, um, it's a special edition one. So I know that lots of people have had some challenges trying to thread the machine um, automatically. And again, the way that the dealer showed me to do it, and you might have said, I actually hook it back to the front. He said not to put the foot down to thread it. It's really hard for me not to put the foot down if I was being... Um, honest um if you were being really good you should lock it and you'll hear that because if you do press the start button it's very exciting not that you want to have to have that happen but um and then it's just a matter of threading it now that's how the threader should work and it should be it should it's like a two-step kind of thing you sorry I hear it click and then click so now you see i don't have I, I still have my sewing thing on. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple of changes. One, I really like to use my straight stitch as well. So the couple of things that I now need to do, I don't have to take it off that way, but I just prefer to. I need to take that off. Have you all got your P foot on your machine? Okay, so if you want to try and put that on now, so you'll need to take, you'll need to take the leg and the foot off. So both of those pieces would now be off. You can take them all off together. It's just not what I do. And then we need to put the P foot on. And so to put that on, if you haven't done it, is just by unscrewing that and then screw that on 
and then tighten it up. Um, I don't know whether I can, you can see now that that's on. Okay. If you've already got your red bobbin case in, you can leave it. Um, if you've got your yellow one in for embroidery, your choice, you can leave it. You'll see that I've got the standard what comes out of the box plate on, but I also have the straight stitch plate. Um, do I prefer it? Yeah, I do for embroidery. Um, I've been known to sew with it for straight stitching. Um, it just doesn't eat stuff. So to change it relatively easily. But again, if you had to swap bobbin cases, it is a matter of just popping it out like that. It's pretty easy. And then putting back in. What I always check is that the red arrow or yellow arrow matches the red dot on the stopper. It needs to do that. And you'll see it does not move, okay? So I'm going to put my straight stitch plate on. One of the things I love about this machine is how you just have a pop thing to pop them on and off. The 550E, which is it's more than double, I think it's double the price, I have to unscrew it and it annoys me. And I didn't realise how much it annoyed me until I got it and then realised I just assumed it would have the pop thing, but it doesn't. Um, the machine, when you do put the straight stitch plate on, will tell you that you've got that on um, and certain stitches will no longer be there. So let me just put that back. So then um, this isn't the thread I would be using. Let me just admit, Margaret. Um, but just to make it easier to see, Always use a Janome um, bobbin, again recommended. And just make sure, and again, you would have done this for sewing, so it's no different for embroidery, it's got to look like the letter P. You pop it into that and then you know how to do that. Now in terms of the needle that I would use for embroidery, um, I probably, oh gosh, 70% of the time using 7511 for just about most things. But, um, and it's where my tech and Janome Australia Tech don't agree. Uh, Janome say 7511 in most instances. Um, my tech said for my machine, when he was playing with it, it seemed to prefer a 9014. Um, so I've used both. Uh, so Chris, the 9014 is the red needle and the 7511 is the blue tip if you're going to buy Janome. Do I think you have to buy Janome? I've used Organ and Schmitz, um, there's probably a couple of others I've used and they seem to work okay. I guess just for this machine with the journey that I went through with it, I've now just exclusively used Janome needles in it. Every machine's different though, and I think even within machines. So like um, Brenda's 9850 might love a certain thread and a certain needle and Jocelyn's prefer something else and it's just one of those things so um so once you've threaded so has everyone got their p foot on and they've threaded their machine and of course don't forget to pop that through so i'll say red bobbin case so your bobbin case should be in with your bobbin now i actually use uh genome bobbin fill Again, recommended by the tech, just because it's finer. I have others, I have Madeira and that, which is okay. The times that I use that is when you can't see the back. 
if I was doing freestanding lace or something where you could see the back, I would actually use the matching embroidery thread. Um, and that's okay. And I would still use the red bobbin case. So what we, and again, just based on my experience with my machine, um, I would I would get the Janome bobbin fill um, and then use that. And then, like I say, that would normally be what I would put in here if I was, like, for the sample that we're doing today. Um, I would do that. So any questions? So is everybody now got a setup ready that you have one spool of thread threaded? You can floss if you can try the floss. And, again, you will feel a definite click as it engages into those discs. And that's really important, I found. When I rush, the other thing that I've forgotten to do in my steps and I've just realised is the foot pressure. So that's the dial. I'll just check this way. Up the top here. And because I have poor eyesight, I don't know why they make the numbers white. So I texted them in. Um, so I could see when it was a three and when it was a five. The foot pressure for embroidery needs to be on three. So just make sure your foot pressure is on three. Should we put the embroidery model on? Yeah, we're going to... The short answer, Elaine, is yes. You need to have the um, arm on which is something we didn't actually list in our thing, Holly. We should have done that. We'll add that. Yeah, no, thank oh, you. Oh, the, oh, the embroidery unit. Yes. See, we didn't even think of that because we just leave it on all the time. Correct. Okay. Does everyone Do have their embroidery on? Do you want to run through that while I try to help a couple people? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 sure. <laughs> I'll just swap over cameras and sound and all that. So give me a second. So you should be able to see. Okay, we're back here. Um, so you'll see at the back here my embroidery arm. And it's a really good point that Elaine brought up because, again, I have mine on all the time and I never take it off except to transport it. If you've never put that on, you will need to do that to be able to embroider. Um, and it is absolutely something we've forgotten to add into the things to do. So, um, have a look at that. Has everyone got their embroidery arm on? That is such a good thing. Okay, so for those of you that don't have it on, and thanks for chatting it because it helps, do you know where it is? Because you'll need to slide the back off and slide it on. For those of you that do have it on, on the right hand side is a, at the back is a button. Oh. That you press down and the arm will come out and then you'll hear it lock in. Once you start embroidering more often, like I say, I just never take it off. So it's such, it's such a good thing. And, again, that's the whole thing. When you're new, why would you, or if you've never done it, why would you put it on? And, again, for people like us that have been embroidering, we don't even think twice about it now. So it's great. So, again, if you've got that there, that's what you need.
The other thing with the needles, so everybody's okay with being able to swap their needles and things like that. And I think, again, just in terms of what we use for the embroidery, there's a whole other realm about when you start embroidering on T-shirts and other unusual fabrics. But for the purposes of getting started, Embroidery 101, 7511s, blue tip, great. You might need a red tip. It's just going to depend on your machine, but I would definitely try with 7511. And I've used 7511s on vinyl, suede, fake suede, uh, fake and, and fake leather, calico, every cotton. So it's, they're really quite good. And, of course, they're sharp. Um, so, yeah. So they're the needles that I would certainly try for this. So if you haven't got a 7511 in your machine right now, pop one in. Has, um, I'm just going to turn. Put that one back on. And then I'm going to, I'll just change my layout so I can see all of you because it's easier for me. Okay. Um, alrighty. So has everyone got their embroidery um, on? Thanks, Jocelyn. Well done. You worked it out. It's actually not that hard. And a really good tip, it's now going to be several pounds, kilos, depending where you are in the world, uh, heavier. Don't lift it up. You've got the risk that it will, it can bend out of shape. And I learned that. Um, when I took it in for a service, I just lifted the whole thing up and my service tech almost had five kittens on the floor because he just went there. And again, I didn't realize, I just, because I'm so used to having it on, I just didn't even think about it. Yeah, Elaine, just, just restart it. It should be happy. All it's trying to do is recognize the arm. That's all. Um, so, yeah. So, just remember when you take it in for a service, take the arm off and keep it separate. So, all righty. So, we're now got a spool of thread, we're threaded, we've got a needle on and we've got the P foot and we've now got the embroidery arm on. Yes, we're all good? Happy to continue? No one's screaming or crying or having a drink? Jocelyn, are you let, having one? We're just having water. Let us know in chat if you need a little extra help with it. Okay. It's over to you for the next step. All righty. Okay, so we're going to talk about stabilizers and your and hooping. So, um, really, there are a lot of different stabilizers out there that you can find when you go out there. It can be kind of overwhelming, but we've broken down to the four main types of stabilizers. There's the cutaway stabilizer, which I have here. So you can, can you guys see that? Is that, yeah? So this is the cutaway stabilizer. You have to use scissors to get it off of your project. But if you are using something that has any kind of give, any kind of knit, you're going to want to use cutaway in order to have a stable design. If you are using something that's super dense, you might want to use cutaway also. So the cutaway, this is a really big roll of it that I got on. Um, there we go. This is a really big roll of it that I got from Bro Thread on Amazon. It was a really good price, and I like this one a lot. The other one is, oops. The other one is Tearaway. 
The other one is tearaway stabilizer. So you can see on the backs of these pro of this project where I had to cut away this stabilizer, but on the back of this flower you're going to do, all I had to do was tear away at it and it came away clean from the back of my embroidery design. So that's really nice if you are doing it on towels or something that's gonna show the back. If you're doing it on vinyl, like marine vinyl, you can use tear away because it's heavier. If you're use, if you're doing something that's a heavier fabric, you can use the tear away. But if you're doing something that's lighter or has give, you want the cutaway. And so then what we also have, the last kind is wash away. And if you go into the store, there are a couple different washaways. This one just feels more like a fabric. It's soft and feels like a fabric. And this is just the Kimberbell wash away stabilizer. And then this one feels like a plastic. It's like a heavy duty plasticky feel. And I've used this one for doing freestanding lace and it works really well for that. It all depends on what you are doing. So it depends on your fabric type. It depends on the density of your design. And as you do it, you're just going to get better at it because that's how Gail and I did it. It was trial and error, really. It was like, whoop, that didn't work. So let's try a different stabilizer. And we tried it, you know, we would try a different stabilizer and go, yeah, that worked a whole lot better. Um, one thing I'm going to show you on this is that you can see that there was no pulling on this design here with the cutaway stabilizer, even though I have that dense satin stitch going around, there's no puckering. But with the tear away on this really lightweight tea towel, there's puckering around my design. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's puckering. So I would have wanted to use two layers probably of the tear away stabilizer. So let's move on to how we do it. Hello, can you just try and put that the daisy closer to the camera? Yeah. If possible? Yep. It's easier if you, I can't do it because I can't work out left, right, front, back, sideways. Uh, almost. Yeah, almost, almost. Almost That's, got it. Almost a little bit. Well, my left, probably your right. <laughs> We're going to get this. Go, no, the other way. That's it. There we go. Now we got it. A little bit closer, maybe. It's like backing up a trailer. It is a bit. No, the other way. That's it. There we go. Because so you're in the you can, US, it's the other way to me in Australia. So you guys can see that it puckered a little bit around the flower, around that satin stitch of the flower. But it's really nice on the back of the towel to have it tear away and not have that stabilizer showing on the back of your towel. So this is the design that we're gonna ask you guys to go ahead and do in just a few minutes that we're gonna get ready to do together. All right. So you just need your SQ14 hoop. And there's going to be, you're going to run through the same steps when you're doing something like a lightweight, like the tea towel that I'm doing. You're, well, for hooping your stabilizer, it's going to be the same each time. You loosen up that, loosen up the screw and take out the top part. In order to in order to measure my stabilizer, 
I just set the this the insert on top of it. And we like to have some overhang. So I'm gonna put my hoop like that on it. And then just cut away. Holly, like the wind here is um howling. So if I disappear, I've lost power. Okay. I told you you're not allowed to lose power during this. I know. I'm just listening to it. But living right on Bass Strait, I don't have a lot of what <laughs> 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 happens. So anyway. Okay. Okay, but so now good. we should all have our stabilizer cut. Are we good? Um, then we're going to put this down flat. I just put the my green cutting boards under it so, so that you could see it better against the white. Lay your stabilizer on top of it. Now here is where this might differ. With this thin fabric, I am going to hoop the fabric with the stabilizer. So I am going to lay my fabric down on top of my stabilizer. And, you know, as you get more experience, it's gonna be easier to know where you're putting, you know, how placement and everything. And also this grid will come in very, very handy. All right, it looks like we're pretty much caught up there. And then you're gonna take the insert and you're just going, make sure you have it so that the L is on the top left. Your, your the screw should be loose enough that that goes in. And you wanna make sure that your, you don't have your fabric bunched up, that it's pulled kind of taut in there. And then you're going to go under and tighten that screw up. They recommend not to use the screwdriver to tighten that screw up. I yeah, used to just do that, hand tighten it. But it, yeah, but it can over time snap it. Yeah. Um, you um, don't need to tighten it terribly much. I mean, it doesn't, you don't want to over tighten it. Just hand tight is good. And so now we have a nice embroidery field all set up. Doing vinyl on here instead of fabric that you are hooping with it. All you have to do instead of hooping it with it, I have a piece of vinyl here that I was going to show you. I need a smaller piece. If you have vinyl that you are trying to hoop, you don't want to put the hoop, you don't want to try to hoop it with your stabilizer because that's going to bend your hoops out of place. That's just going to, it's just too thick for the hoops. So that is where, I don't know if you guys saw the other day, we use blue tape as our favorite Friday tool. Love our blue tape. I get it at Costco by the stack. And so for that, I'm just leaving my fabric in, but obviously you would not have the fabric in. This would be directly on your stabilizer. So you would put your vinyl in and onto the stabilizer. You just use your blue tape to hold it down like that. The other way you could do it is a lot of people use like 505 spray. I don't particularly like using this all the time just for everything because I've heard from a lot of technicians that it gums up your machine. 
I've heard a lot of people say they use it all the time and it's never caused any problems. So I don't know, but I just prefer not to take any chances gumming up my machine and the blue tape works fabulously. When I did this sewing mat that I have here, I did the um, the end-to-end -end quilting in the hoop and I used the 505 spray for that because I was doing it right in the middle of this large piece of fabric and I had to have it placed just right. So I used the spray for that. But otherwise, I just, I like using the tape or I like using the hoops. There is sticky back stabilizers. We're there not is. talking about them in this session because we, we could drown you in information of the rabbit hole of stabilizers. Yeah. Um, and it is another option. But for today, we'll just get you to start an embroidery and get your confidence and then you can start to look and venture into those. Um, I haven't used them a lot. I have them. But there's iron away. There's wash away. There's tear away. There's cut away. There's sticky back. There's no show mess. There's uh, so many. And it's just too daunting when you start. And I certainly remember when I first started, I just went, what? And now I have so many. I'm like my own little craft store. Um, so, yeah, there is sticky back. But, again, in this for this session, we're not, talking about yeah that. we just decided to stick with the basic ones that you will probably be using most of the time and that's the tear away and the cutaway and if you are doing something really um lightweight or something or some freestanding lace the wash away so mm. when you have that done you can take your grid and you can lay it on top Everybody's pressed up. I just want to make sure everyone's got their stabilizer and their fabric ready. Yeah. Okay. I lost ready? that camera. My phone has decided to update. So I'm going to try to use this camera. I don't know how well it's going to work, but we're going to go for it and try it. So now we're going to put it on the machine. So you have your fabric and your stabilizer all hooped. You put your grid on. And you don't want to leave your grid on when you're stitching. I did that the first time. I went, oops, that didn't work. So you're going to take... But that's, such a, that's a good point, though, because it kind of, when we started, it kind of made sense that that had to be on there. Again, why? I don't know. But it just kind of felt like it I, I put it on like, oh, I must need this. Exactly. And I yep. put it on and went, oh, I just stitched that to my fabric. Fabulous. Yeah, yeah unhelpful. But um, yeah. the other thing, though, that is helpful to have the grid on, if you ever want to know whether your machine is cali calibrated correctly, in other words, the needle is right at the center point of your grid, Sometimes it's good just to put it on, just to give you that idea. I mean, after a while, you won't. But at first, it's kind of good. Okay. So, okay. So to put it on your machine, you Gail walked you through getting your embroidery unit on. And you might have to, in order to get the hoop on, you might have to lift up your foot a little bit. To get it to glide under there easier you also need the embroidery arm now sticking out so unlocked right this needs to be open this part needs to be open now this black spinny ah, what would you knob is going there's a hole on top that you can see on the embroidery arm and this fits down inside of it. And when you get it fit down in there, it's just going to drop in. And when you get it, let's see if I can get it one handed. That's the test, right? Thanks. Okay, so now you're going to fit this 
into that hole. You're going to feel when it drops in. You're going to turn that knob and it locks it in there. So now this doesn't wiggle around at all. Thank you. You may go. Okay, so now everybody should have their... Um, so now everybody should have their hoop locked onto their machine and your machine turned on. Hang on a sec. Elaine's just got the... the She's put the knob on, but my needle is too low. Uh, use the hand crank on the right to lift it, raise it a little bit. Yeah. Should be in the highest position, especially when you're going to thread it. Right. Did that work, Elaine? Oh, so it is at the highest position. So that's kind of weird. So did you use, can you use the hand crank if you open, well, you don't need to open that up, but if you use the hand crank, you might get it to go up just a tiny bit more. Who's calling who? Uh, Joanne is calling me. So has everyone been able to- Who says her needle is- Joanne says her needle is not calibrated to the center of the dot, of the hoop. Um, it, it may or may not be, but it may be that the grid needs to move a little. I wouldn't, for the purposes of this session, worry about it. It's going yeah. to be more important when we're, like if we were doing a follow-up one and we needed to get something dead center, then I, I will look at how to calibrate. But you know it's that's okay i wouldn't stress it's okay for today it sure is all right so so it's look it's real so i'm just reading all the comments and it's really interesting that um i might once you get through picking your design i got the needle over the hoop but it's just slightly to the left of the hoop that's okay great my needle is okay so now take the foot off to put the hoop in so wait, just a quick question about being able to get the hoop in you know that the lever has like a two-step thing not just one step so let me see if I can show you, can, you. right here so this is up yeah thanks here's right. down here's up but to get the hoop on I lift it even more you can push it all the way up you have to hold it there manually. It doesn't just stay there. Right. Like I that. never did that either because I never had to worry about it when I was just sewing. So there is down and then the up position and then pushing it up all the way manually lifts your needle just a little bit more to get it over thick seams and the hoops and things like that. But when you let go, it goes back down into its natural up position. It won't just stay there. Okay, so now the reason you have the hoop is, well, first let's get your design on. In order to get your design on your machine, you are at your home screen in embroidery mode. Is everybody in embroidery mode? Okay, so to get to embroidery mode, you see the two sewing machines on your screen. So there are two sewing machines on your screen. And when you push that, it says switch to ordinary sewing mode if you're in embroidery mode. And if you're in sewing mode, it says switch to embroidery mode. So you want to switch to embroidery mode. So you're going to say, okay. So now when you do that, you should see a screen that says designs, monogram, and new edit. Are we all good? Everybody's thumbs up on what we see on the screen. 
All right. Most so how many of you, is this the first time you've ventured into embroidery designs? Two times, your second time, first time. It's a lot of people's first time. So there we go. That's why we're doing this class, right? Okay, so the sewing machine is how you get into embroidery mode. And your arm probably moved a little bit when you did it. And that's fine. Yep, that's what it's supposed to do. So now your built-in designs are on are under designs. You're gonna you can use your finger or you can use your stylus pen and touch designs. And now you should see where it says favorite designs, and that's page one of six. Are we all there? All right, good. You can see number six on there. That's the one we're going to do, but I'm going to show you how to go through the pages. Down at the bottom, the big red arrows, you use those to go through all the pages of designs. So you can scroll through all of them. When you have, when you are using, your, well, I'll show you later. I'm not going to confuse it right now. That's how you scroll through the designs, is using the red arrows at the bottom. If you want to get out of this page, out of the screen, it's just the X at the bottom right. So you just X out, and it takes you back to that home screen. So in designs, select number six, and it will take you to an edit screen where you see that little flower. Are we all there? All right. Now you'll see where the grid comes in useful. You can see on the screen, on the edit screen, the grid on there. And it will tell you where in your hoop it is going to be. So you could move that flower using your stylus all around. And you can use the grid in the hoop with the grid on the screen to see exactly where it's going to be in your hoop. So if you just touch it with your stylus and just start moving it around, it will go. You can put it wherever you want within that, within that grid. Hang on a sec. Uh, Diana, you say you don't have the grid on your machine or for on your the one that comes with on your hoop? Screen. She's typing. It's okay. I can see her typing. And Amy's raised her hand also. Oh, okay. So, Diana, on your screen, let me just go back to design. Please. There was a setting. If you go right down to so where the uh, design is that we're doing, down the bottom on the right-hand side, there is like a grid. Yeah. That's okay. It's a great question because you, you don't know. Amy, what can we do for you? I have a yellow um, caution triangle that says SQ14A 5.5 times 5.5 inch. What does that mean? It mm, means Are you that's able to turn your camera around so we can see what that looks like? If that's possible, that would be amazing because I'm so visual. Isn't that just telling you which hoop you're supposed to use for this design? I think so. I'm pretty sure. Almost there. Almost. It's almost oh, the other okay. way. Your other. Oh, that's it. That's okay. fantastic. Oh yeah. That's that is just telling you which hoop you need to that um they say you can use with this design. So I can just hit OK. Yep. Yep. You can just yep. hit OK. It's yeah, a check and balance to go. Oh. This one will fit into the SU14. What you wouldn't want to do is possibly use a design that fits the 20 on a, on a, in the, the smaller hoop. So it's just a bit of a check and balance to go, have you got the right hoop? The machine, awesome. doesn't know, the machine doesn't recognize which hoop you have in. So if you select 
a five by seven design, but you have this smaller hoop in, it's just going to go. So it puts that on there to remind you, check your hoop. Make sure you've got the right hoop. See the black buttons right under the grid. And if you go through those, you're going to come to a rainbow. And if you select that, it's going to take you to a color selection. Are you on that screen? Are we all together? Okay. Are we all on the edit screen? Yes, well, I am right. now. Looks good. Now, what you are seeing is the, um, the order that it's going to stitch in of the colors. So the, um, at the top, you see the kind of orangish red, and that's the first color that's going to stitch. You don't have to do their colors. You can do whatever color you want. And you could even rename this. You can do whatever. You can write it down on a notebook so that you can remember what order you want to do your colors. Or you can just use, when you're into the stitching screen, use the daisies. And then that will show you, that will show you the next color in the order. Right, right. And so for this, you arrow through and you can see the um you can see all four colors that are going to be you're, you're going to be stitching and you can see the order that they're going to stitch in i no i don't think i can so. are we all there so in the edit screen, what's really good about that edit screen is you can, there's lots of things that you can do in there, which again, we won't cover off today, but you can duplicate it, you can move it. And again, that's where the grid, that plastic grid can be really helpful to understand where you want to locate things. It's something for you to play with later when you get confidence. Yeah. But today, it's in the center. That's okay. <laughs> Yeah, the only thing I want to show you on that edit screen today is the color selection for your thread. Later on, you can play with spinning it, you can play with reversing it, enlarging and shrinking and all kinds of things you can do there. But for today, we just wanted to show you the thread selection. So yeah. now you can hit OK or X out of there and you're back in your edit screen. Go to, so this is not where you're going to stitch from. To go to your stitching screen, you're going to hit OK on your edit screen. Okay. All right, that's good. OK. OK, so now you're in a screen where you can see it, but the grid is gone. You can see just our daisy or whatever flower it is. And you can see some numbers down below. You see their whole design there. You can see that it's telling you to make sure you have your P foot on. Are we all on that screen? Yeah? Oh, I see a lot of thumbs up, good. I have mine set at 500 stitches. Hang on, Amy's, Amy's not there. Where are you, Amy? What's up, Amy? I'm sorry, I hit a wrong button and I, I lost you. So could you just tell me again real quickly, I'm sorry, how sure. you got to where you are? Sure. So when you're on the edit screen, you can see the grid and the flower, right? In order to get to the screen that you need to actually do your stitching, you're going to just hit the OK. And then it's going to take you to a screen that says ready to sew. You good? OK. We're good, Amy? OK, awesome. So now you can see that all the colors are there, but I like to see what step it is stitching at every single, you know, step along the way. In order to do that, do you see the arrows on the right hand side? There, there's the up arrow and the down arrow. And if you select one of those, it's going to take you to another selection of buttons and there are a couple of daisies there. Do you see that? A button. So touch that, select that. And when you select that, it's going to take on the screen, you're only going to see the color that you are currently stitching. 
Diana, that's the one you're looking for. Yeah. So now you are only seeing the color you are currently stitching. All righty. My issue before was that I was in the wrong screen. So I'm wondering why, like, you're always going somewhere else. So it's all right. I'll... <laughs> I'm off on a tangent, I guess. <laughs> Mind me. <laughs> okay. I am, let me see if I'm, I am all threaded here. And I love that little and big daisy. I absolutely love. I live on that to go what's next. So then while that's stitching out, I'll get the next color or yep. like stuff like that. There are some people with other machines, they've got, and the 550's got it, it's got like a little arrow thing that shows you where you're going next. And people go, oh, but I love that. You know what? I just do not find that of value at all because I don't care where it's going next. I'm more worried about I'm now doing the red or I'm now doing the green. So yep. it won't go there by default. So just make sure part of it that you use. It will um, always go to where you can see the whole design. So you're always going to have to select that daisy in order to see individual colors. Colette's saying help. Oh, it Colette. didn't take it. Okay, Colette, we're going to help you. So did, it, did you not get to the ready to sew screen? So Colette, oh, you're back in the edit screen. Okay, so do you see the okay button? If you click on the OK button, it will take you to the ready to sew screen. Uh, let me see if I can pull my laptop around and I just need to unplug it. Do you want me to, do you want me to see if I can move mine? Oh, I got it. Will your phone not do that? My sure. phone died for some reason. Do you see it? Yes. Okay, let me. How are you going to manage that? Because I'm clever. I know you are, but. Okay. So, guys. so there's the edit screen that everybody was on. And here are those arrows that I was talking about. Here is the OK button to go to the ready to sew screen. So click on that. And that tells me what hoop I need to have on. So, okay. And so let's then stand now, which is great. But keep going because I think that's worth it. Okay. So now I'm on the ready to sew screen. And here are my daisies. When I first get on it, this is what I see. But I need those daisies in order to, I'm going to, I want to select those to see just what color I'm stitching. So my first color is the red. And here's where I'm stitching. All right. Are we good? Gail, is that visible? It is. Sorry. I'm just giving Jocelyn's husband my breakfast order. That's <laughs> well, I'll I'm not sure how to come from Brisbane to Tasmania, but let's not worry about that. Will he come to Seattle? Possibly. He seems quite nice and helpful. All right. Oops. And now I lost. Okay. Okay. So now we should all be on the ready to sew screen. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. I'm just going to show you how we get started, and then we're going to let you guys go ahead and sew. So you've got your tail like this, so you want to pull it out longer like that so you can hold on to it. Yep, remember to take the grid off. Oh, yes, take the grid off. Don't be like me the first time and sew it to your fabric. And then I was mad because here I had this shiny new grid, and I put a bunch of holes in it. Okay, so the first, so next thing you're gonna do is you're going to lower your P foot. And you're gonna hold on to this tail for just a second, even while it starts sewing. 
That's why you want kind of a long tail. You don't want your fingers in there. All right, so when your foot is lowered, Trisha, are we doing okay? Okay. So then we don't use the feet on embroidery. You only use the buttons on the front. Holding on to the tail with the foot lowered, you're just gonna push start. And hold on to that tail. After it does a few stitches and it gets going just a little bit, I'm gonna stop it. I'm gonna lift up the foot. And then I take my embroidery scissors that I have and I'm going to snip off that tail. So now that's out of the way. It's not gonna get caught up in anything. It's not gonna make a mess of anything and it's nice and smooth there. I just put my foot back down, push start again, and off it goes. Now I'm gonna stop that. Thank you. And there we go. So is everybody ready to start stitching? Realize that if this is the first time you're about to embroider, you've gotten this far. Well done, you guys. It's very exciting. I feel like our our children are growing up. <laughs> It's great, though, because this was the whole reason why we thought we should do it. Trim the thread when it's finished. It should trim it to the bottom. It should it's cut at, it. It's at the top, but not cut. Can you show us? A way to go turn my camera on. Oh, no, you were on, Vanessa. Now you're off. Oh, poo. It's still attached to the, to the embroidery. Uh, try pulling on it. It might just be sitting in there. Okay, I'll try that. Okay. Thank you. You're right. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Holly, um, Peggy's, um, I've just found that there's a bunch of chats as well as other things, so my apologies if I've missed some of these. Peggy's just saying that um, she's getting a, uh, on the screen the press, you know, the up-down button and across, mm -hmm. and that um, it juggles and it stops. I've just asked her if she's pressed the X to see whether it clears. I've not had that, have you? No. Oh, she's just broken a needle. Dang. Oh. Oh, Elaine broke, her thread broke. And these things all happen, no matter how experienced you are. Yeah. This is what yeah. happens. This so, is why you keep lots of needles on hand and why you don't look away from your machine. Sometimes threads can break because it's not threaded properly at the top, sometimes. Sometimes because it's a full moon. Sometimes the coloured thread. I have a problem with one particular yellow thread. Amy, um, did you my where my design started and finished does not line up? What did I do wrong? Is your hoop um did you your black knob on your hoop, did you turn it to lock your hoop in? Yes. So it's locked in. Yes. And I'll see. I'll see if I can show you. It's probably it's getting ready to do the next color. It could be that. They don't automatically line up. I well, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it in there. Well, I oh, would okay. try to put in your next color and see what happens because it could just be the design. Okay. Should we cut and start rethreading? 
you it automatically cuts it at the no, end yeah. of but then to swap the the thread color if you cut the way that i do it now is that i cut at the spool and then i pull the thread from the needle downwards don't pull it backwards through the tension disc like to the spool i used to but it's not a good habit to get into because apparently it can it can you know like threads get caught and stuff like that so try to remember when you cut it pull it that's down a way way. upwards yeah i guess that's the best way i could explain it when you're done with the first color go ahead and put in your next color if you need help with threading let us know yep don't forget to floss right, so the people are starting their second color and it does get a bit mesmerizing, especially when you start doing like 90,000 stitches and stuff like that. But I say, this is just to give you confidence to get used to doing it, that's all. And that's why we pick such a simple, quick design, just to get you to get the hang of it. Timing's going really well, Holly. I reckon I'm happy with the timing. Just a question, can you make the design larger or smaller? Yes, you can in the edit screen and you can hear me. So um, in the edit screen, Jocelyn, you can increase or decrease by 20% either way, but that's the maximum. Without software, that's the maximum that you can do. Um, the, hmm, it does, sorry, I'll have to, let me play. Um, I think it reduces the stitch count, doesn't it? When you when you reduce I it. I think it does, yeah. 1469. I shall have a look. No, it doesn't. So when you reduce it. It does not change the stitch count, so it can ch that will change the stitch quality potentially. If you have software like we have the Janome software, and you increase or decrease the size, then it changes the stitch count. But using the machine, apparently, it doesn't. It maintains it. So I've heard a lot of digitizers, like Gail said, we are not professionals at any of this. And I've heard a lot of professionals say, don't change it by more than 10% if you're maintaining stitch count, if you want to maintain the quality. Elaine, can you unmute and tell us what's going on? I don't see her on my screen. Hello. Oh, there she is. Hi, I don't know what happened. It kind of, it took all of like my bobbin, which is white, and put it to the top because I'm using a gray. So my design here is like white mostly. And then it sort of stopped and then it moved over to this way. And then uh, this machine. I've embroidered before using my brother, and I haven't had any trouble, but I'm just struggling with this machine. So it seems to be right over to one side. Yeah. Can you, can, that's okay. Let's, let's work on it together. Can you go over to your screen where the design is and just go into the edit? So down mm -hmm. to the grid on the bottom right. See, ah, yes, yeah, so you can see where it is. Okay. So you've moved it, which is fine. That's okay um, because the original design was in the middle, but that doesn't matter because it will do that. Okay. So that's all right. Just press okay out of that. So now that I understand that, so just press okay and keep your hands clear. So just press okay. It's going to move. That's all right. Okay. And okay. then press X out of the SQ14. Yeah. So can we just go back over to your hoop, like back over? You've got really good camera control. I'm really happy with that. So <laughs> he's a hire you. I know. <laughs> Clearly we can't do this. 
So, Elaine, is the hoop locked in properly? Because you'll see that it's actually sitting not correctly. What size hoop have you got there? Is that the SQ14 or the 20? It's that the 14A. Okay. Your, your hoop is... Yeah, it's crooked. It's at an angle. Yeah. So you need it to go back and unlock though. it? Yeah. It, so it, I put it in and I locked it. And then it doesn't move. Like once I lock it, it won't move. It shouldn't move. Okay, okay. so when you lock it again, you might. Okay, so. Oh, the, oh it, it just did it. Yes. Perfect. Okay. All there right. You go. Can, so your fabric, can is that tight? I'm just, again, I'm just trying to look at it. It looks like it's got some bumps and ways, but that could be the fabric. I don't know, Elaine. It's just a um a cotton piece. Is so, it tight in the So it it is tight. So that was the first thing. My my fabric or my hoop was not correct. Yes. So it needs to to know that you've got that locked in correctly, it should look like how it does now. Okay. And it should not move. Okay, perfect. So, so what, yeah, I, that must uh, have not been locked in right. Yes, which has probably put everything a bit bent out of shape. So okay. just up the top is your foot pressure. You know the dial up the top, is that on three? Yep. Perfect. All righty. What I would probably do for you is I would start again. Now, you'll see... Your P foot, your knee, and is up in the corner where it probably should be for where you located the design when you moved it. Yep. So maybe um, I can recenter it. I just was doing that because my hoop wasn't right, so I was trying to yeah. move it. That location is absolutely fine. Don't stress about that. I'm more worried that the hoop was out of alignment for you because yeah, that's it's not going to end well. Okay. So, <laughs> So can you just go back to your screen again? I just want to see what step you're up to. Look at this. You are going to be a camera person from now on. <laughs> All right. So you're back to step one, I think it is. Is that what it's highlighted, one? Yep. Okay. And if you go to the right-hand side, you if you're in America, we're doing this like 16,000 miles apart. Isn't that clever? Wow. Anyway. If you see the arrows, if you just take the top arrow just underneath the P foot sign, yep, and you should get the two daisies. Or it could be the next one down. You might yep. have to arrow again. Sorry, mate. That's okay. Um, if you've got the two daisies, press the daisy again. Oh, so you can just see the red? Fantastic. Yep. I would suggest that you re-thread just to be careful with your top thread. Okay. And have another go. But, and let us know what happens. Well okay. done. And thank you thank for Thank you so us. much. Cool. I really appreciate it. Thank you. This is what this class is for. We don't want you to hate it. And it is different <laughs> to a brother, though, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> a lot different. <laughs> it is. Thank yeah. you so much. I appreciate it. That's okay. See how you go. Okay. And I think a lot of people are finishing up. Well, I didn't so, know. So when you are done, you get to the very end. It's going to cut that stitch at the very end also. And what you're going to do to take it off is just the reverse of what you did to get it on. You're going to lift up on your your presser foot and then you're going to you're going to turn that knob to loosen your hoop and then you're just going to lift that up thank you you're going to lift it off and then remember you can lift up that foot even higher to get it to come out so then it's going to be, oh, I forgot that I was still attached because I was stitching. Jocelyn, fantastic. You see, you can do it. We got oh, it. Oh, bacon sarnie. Oh, now I'm jealous. Aw. Woohoo.
Do you deliver to Seattle? Fantastic. I can. <laughs> For a delivery fee? <laughs> Diana, how did you go? Good? Okay, so now you should all, you can all have your hoop off in order to get it out. We're just going to do the reverse. You're going to loosen that screw. And lift out your insert and then take your fabric off. And I didn't actually stitch, so I don't have anything on here. I just started it to show you cutting the cutting the um, the tail. And then you guys can all hold up your flowers for us. Oh, beautiful. Very nice. Look at that. They got it. I feel like we've just been given a bouquet of flowers. I know. Oh, it's so good. I'm just. So now I'm going to show you some um, how to. I'm going to share my screen with you and show you how to download and save designs that you've purchased online. We have an album of um, designers that our members and our admins have um, tried and we have discovered work really well because there are designers out there that they're like, mm, you know, they're okay. And then there are designers out there that you stitch them out and you're like, that's a really good one because it stitches smooth and everything turns out polished and wonderful. And so if you find one and it's not listed in our album, we'd love to have you pop it into that album because we want to hear about them. So a lot of the designers will have free, you know, freebies that they have. Sometimes they're seasonal freebies and sometimes they just have freebies all the time. I like to go try their freebies just to see if I like how they stitch out. I think it's a really good way before you start, um, before you pay a whole bunch of money to see um, if you like the designer. Do the designers do custom work? A lot of them do. Yeah. Not all of them do, but some do. Um, I'm all answer. I was busy typing the answer. Oh, you were? <laughs> I thought that was my job while you were talking. Well, keep talking. I know. I took, I'm so sorry. I took your job. I'm, I'm retired, so I know, but you know. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, okay, let me see if I can share my screen. Okay. So here is an email that I got from a designer. Are you all seeing it? Yep. Okay, so here's a, a email I got from a designer. I purchased these three designs from them. And um, with this, a lot of them will send you an email that have the download links. So for this one, I'm just gonna click on the download link and it takes me to this new screen on her site. I'm just gonna say download now. And it asks me where I want it to go. And I'm just going to tell it to take, put it in my downloads. So then I have to save it. So I downloaded it from the website that the email took me to. And at the very top of my downloads folder is that Realm Passport zip bag. So there it is right there. Now when I do it, I like to minimize this screen so that I have just half of it up. And I like to pull up, I like to pull up another screen where I keep all of my sewing, all my embroidery designs. And here are all my embroidery designs that I have purchased. And I have them divvied up by genre. You have a problem. <laughs> Shh. Jim's right over there. He's going to hear you. 
every time Gary backs one up, he goes, I do not know how you can have a hundred thousand designers <laughs> still buy some. Because there are always so many more to buy. Okay, yeah. so I like to have these two screens, my download screen where I just purchased and my design screen where I like to store them. I like to have them both up side by side. So in my download screen, it's a zip file. So I double click on that and it opens it up. Double click on that. Now you're gonna see that there are all kinds of designs um, in here for different machines. You know, the dot .sos, the dot .peses, um, the exps, the hus. Our machines just use the Jeff files, the JEF. So I'm going to go down to my zip bags. And I'm going to create a folder for this one. Um, I think this one was called Realm Passport. And then I'm gonna double click on that to open up that new folder that I just made. And now over here in my download, I, I'm only, I only need the Jeff files, the PDFs and the JPEGs. So I just go through and I get just those. So the PDFs will be the instructions on how to do a particular stitch out because once you start to buy designs, you can buy any number of bags and books and anything. Right. And so there's certain ways you need to do it. Um, they'll also have files that will show you the colours, the stitch numbers, even I think how much thread it takes, doesn't it, per colour, some of the designs? Yeah. A lot. They'll tell you what colors, how much, how many stitches for each step, everything. Yeah. So now that I've selected just the files that I need, I right click on it. I copy, go over here to my designs folder. I'm sorry, I'm getting notifications. Right click and then paste it and then these are just the files that i need for my Genomi machine and there they are saved on my hard drive now when i want to put them on my thumb drive i'm gonna plug my thumb drive in here And it automatically pops up when I um, when I plug it in. On my thumb drive, I also have it divvied up by genre. A lot of people just put the ones that they are going to stitch out right then on their thumb drive, and then they take them right back off again. I don't do that, but you know, it's just a matter of personal preference. So I'm going to put them into let's say and you've I'm already sorry. formatted this thumb drive in your machine haven't you i did we should have shown that and i did not i don't have one to format i meant to go buy one do you all know how to format it we can show you really easy all right once this is i would finished, like to know absolutely okay we can do so things. as soon as i'm done doing this let's show them how to format that yeah. So I'm just going to put it into here. I don't need these things. I'm just going to get rid of them. Okay. So now this one on my, the, um, the folder on my left here is my thumb drive folder. And on the right is my hard drive. I'm going to take just my Jeff files. And I'm going to copy those and go over to my thumb drive and paste them over here. So my thumb drive just has the Jeff files and all my JPEGs and PDFs 
are on my hard drive. The other thing that I like to do, and this is this might just be me, but I'm going back to my downloads here, the download folder where it's the zip file. I like to keep every single zip file that I've purchased just in case I ever get another machine. And so I have a folder called zipped files. And I just have all the zip files I've ever purchased. And then uh, if something happens to any of my files or anything like that, I can just go to this folder and find the original. You need to have, there are two folders that you need to have, ideally. And again, this comes back to how you organize your designs, okay? and uh if you don't put a lot on you can just put them into there's this thing called an emb folder um but uh this i just cleaned this up i just wiped it to make sure it was empty um and it is literally i might even so you put it into that's the empty one wherever you can here it is i need a lane for my camera work because i'm really poor at it so just pop it into there. And of course, inevitably, I get it the wrong way around. Okay? Um, hang on a sec. Where do I just get that down? So normally, um, do that. And then. So I'm just shutting the arm down you don't have to but i prefer to do this and i'm going to turn off my machine so um, my machine is off and i'm putting this empty thumb drive in and it's got nothing on it and i'm just going to turn my machine on it's actually now formatted and it will have two folders in it let me see if i can grab it this way using these ones i can't see my other i can't see uh, 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 whether you can see this i don't think i can grab it easily enough let me just grab this So that it's that easy to format, believe it or not. And then I'm going to, let me just turn my camera around. Okay. So if I was to go into, I'm going to go into sewing mode. I know that my carriage arm isn't open because I shut it and that's okay because it will just open up the embroidery mode. The machine, you can set it to ask you, do you want to reset or resume the last pattern? I just have mine set that way. I'm just going to press that. So see the folder just there? Okay, I'm now in embroidery mode. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so then if you go here, there's two options. That's the sewing machine, but this is the thumb drive. To me, it does not look like a thumb drive. I don't know. It looks like a light bulb, but it's not. It's a thumb drive. See, there's an EMBF folder. The machine created that. The machine created that. Can you now hear? Yep. Yeah. Um, if you press that, I have no files to show because I've got nothing in there. Inside that, there is an EMB folder. So because I don't have any folders in there, it's not in there. So, and I also have an error showing on my machine at the moment, but we won't talk about that. So um, if you press that, then there'll be an EMB and, and that's the folder that you could put the files in. Holly can show you that on her thumb drive that's been configured. Yep. Okay, so here is my uh, USB drive, and there's my EMB and my ORD. You're not going to do anything with the ORD folder. 
you're just going to leave that alone. All of your files are going to go into the EMB right there. And so you don't have to have these folders in there. I just, I just really like subfolders and organization and that's just how I am. So the EMB, but leave alone the ORD. Some people have put it in the ORD before and, not, and their machine can't find their um, files and that's why. All right, let's see how many files will we be able to put in folders on our machine. You can put a lot in, but here's the thing. If you put a lot of them in the folder, it's gonna take the machine longer to read it when you select that folder. So the more files you have in each folder, it's going to take a long time to read that folder. Uh, why can't we use a bigger gigabyte drive? You need to ask Janome just because. I don't know why it's limited to 8 gig. Um, I know a couple of people posted in the group the other day that they use 16 with no problems. Janome will say that it's not recommended. But we also know that people do it and it works. Um, so if you do use a bigger than eight gigabyte, and they actually prefer if it's four. Um, the error that I, I'm currently getting on my machine, they were checking to see what size. And when I told them that mine are four gigabyte, they went, that's preferred, but we could go up to eight. Um, so it's just a limitation of the machine. And like I say, there are definitely people using a larger gigabyte, but you have a risk that it won't work. So if you can't see the files, it's usually the size of, well, it could be a number of things, but it can be the size of your thumb drive. All right. Well, do we have any other questions? No. You're good. So you guys are all going to get a copy of the um, slideshow that we prepared for you. And you're going to get a copy of the special Jeff file that Buffy made for you. She designed it and she created the whole thing from scratch. And it is, it stitches beautifully. It was she, really fun to stitch. And she's done two versions. One is what they call a light stitch out. So if you're not sure that you want to go down the whole satin stitch and thicker, denser design, you can do that. And we'll send you both. And then there's a... It does satin, it does all sorts of great stitching. And the, her reason for doing all those was to show you how how detailed the machine can embroider. Um, and if you do it, love you to share it on the group. But if you do have any other questions, that's no, no problem, just ask. Uh, we just hope that this session was of value to you. By the fact that you've all been able to do daisies, I'm going to say I hope so. Um, but yeah, and thank you for giving up a couple of hours of your time. I do have one more question. Sure. Could you show me how you move your embroidery bar back to your machine? I think oh, have problems yeah. with them. I don't want to really. So the way you do that is you want to, you're going to um, hit that, those sewing machines again on your um, screen. Oh, look, I have a helper. You're going to hit those sewing machines on your screen. You know, it's got to go down. Over here to go, oh, I need to X out of there, sorry. And it's going to say switch to ordinary sewing mode. And I'm going to say, okay, it's going to go back into its home position. The arm is. It's going to go back into its home position. And then on the very right hand side, there's a lever. Thank you. There's a lever that you're going to push down. And it loosens this, and it just slides shut. It just slides shut. Thank you. Yeah. That now. Thank you very much. 
And that's how you open it also. You're going to do that before you switch into embroidery mode. You're going to push that lever. It swings open, push it into its locked position, and then push it into embroidery, and then push the sewing machines to go into embroidery mode. I have a question. Push on my um, my file, the um, the uh, file right here. Look what it shows. That's showing. It almost looks like mine isn't formatted. What does it that just mean? Depends. It depends what's on there. So just yeah, don't keep touching it. Just let it go. You don't need to keep holding it. Okay. Yeah. You've created it. What are those files? What does that say? Well, I guess maybe I, I had saved these previously and I didn't know I had already formatted. Ah, okay. But when, but when I go to them. Just press it once. No file. Hold it. So, Don't do a hard hold. There's nothing there. Mm. There needs to be. What I would probably do, Joanne, is I would re, I would clean that thumb drive with no files whatsoever because those files can corrupt trying to format it on the machine. So just put that thumb drive back into your PC and delete all those folders so it's completely clean. Then pop it back into your machine to turn it on. There's two there. Okay. So, Thank you. Um, if you've got nothing else, I just want to thank you for your time and I just hope that you found this learning lesson worthwhile. Um, we'll do some others. I guess just now that I hope you've got some more confidence um, with doing embroidery and it's not as scary as you think, but this is what uh, we want to be able to do for you is be able to give you different things and learn different things. The machine can do so much. But I just hope it was worthwhile and it's given you some confidence. So, like, thanks again for your time, guys. Thank you for coming. Thank from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. much. And we'll, we'll send Thank the recording. you. What's for dinner? Hungry. Oh, he's doing, you embroidered the hat. Very nice. Janet embroidered the hat. Oh, really? Yeah. That's what he was showing oh, us. Oh, look. Oh. Look at that. That is so cool. Did you just do that? Nice job. Wow. Okay. Janet's doing a lesson on, on embroidering on hats now. Um, I made this about a week ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So I've been playing, and then I've been playing with different friends. So he's an electrician. Now he has a lightning bolt. You embroider on hats? Really? I have to do it with the... Uh, piece flat, so I do a lot of floating. You're amazing. I float it on the pattern and then sew the hat. Mr. Peterson, your wife is amazing. That is good exploration. That He's kind of spoiled. <laughs> if I ever need an electrician, I'll call you. Will you come to Australia? <laughs> yes, we would. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll escort you there. Sure. Oh, there you go. Good. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for your time. Hope Thank it was you. you. I'm sure we'll meet again. If it's not in the group, it'll be here. Thank you, guys. Thank you.